example of Newton's laws being applied on an inclined plane is here when we are asked to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between a 21 kilogram object and the surface of a plane inclined at 40 degrees when an applied force of 20 newtons is acting up and parallel to the incline and the object is accelerating down the incline at two meters per second. So we immediately know that since we have been told that the object is accelerating down the incline, we know that Newton's second law applies here. Newton's second law says that when a net force is applied on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of that net force. It is always advisable to start a question like this by drawing a free body diagram where we just indicate the forces that are acting on this object. Here we can see that there's a force of gravity, which we know is always acting vertically downwards. There is also a normal force because this object is on a surface. There must be a normal force acting on this object. And then there is an applied force that is attempting to Pull the object up the slope note that i say attempting and then we have been asked to calculate the coefficient of friction which tells us there is a frictional force and friction always opposes motion and since the motion is acting down the slope that means that the frictional force must be acting up the slope we know that whenever we get an object on an inclined plane that the gravitational force will have two components those two components being the perpendicular component, the part of that gravitational force that acts perpendicularly to the slope, which we have calculated here using cos of the angle, and then also the parallel component, the part of that force, the part of that gravitational force that is pulling the object down the slope. Once we have calculated this, we know that the normal force is always equal but opposite in direction to the perpendicular component of gravity. So since we have calculated the perpendicular component of gravity, we also already know what the normal force acting on this object is. And then we can see that there are only three forces acting in the horizontal or in the parallel plane on this object. And those are the parallel component of gravity, pulling the object down the slope. And then as we've shown earlier, the frictional force that is opposing the motion and the applied force that is opposing the motion. And so when we calculate the net force acting on this object, we can say that the net force is all the forces acting down the slope. In this case, there's only one Fg parallel minus all the forces acting up the slope because those are opposite to our positive direction. And those are the frictional force and the applied force. And those together must be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of this object where we have now calculated the component of gravity acting down the slope, 132.29. The frictional forces are unknown here, and the applied force was given as 20 newtons, mass of the object given as 21 kilograms, and the acceleration given as 2 meters per second. This allows us to solve to find the unknown frictional force of 70.29 newtons. Now, the question has asked that we calculate the coefficient of friction. And so we use the formula friction is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force, where we've just calculated our frictional force of 70.29. The coefficient is our unknown. And the normal force we calculated, which we know is equal to the perpendicular component of gravity of 157.65 newtons. That then allows us to solve for our unknown coefficient of friction to see that it is 0 0.45. Coefficients of friction do not have units because it is a ratio. And so once again, we can use Newton's second laws by drawing a free body diagram to identify all forces acting on the object. We resolve the gravitational force into its respective components. And then we use an expression for Newton's second law where we add all forces acting in the same direction and subtract the forces acting in the opposite direction to find our unknown.